Hello, and welcome back to Fauna Morgana. We are in the middle of things, in media race, as they would say. I think I pronounced that right, or is it media race? In media race? One of those two. It literally means in the middle of things in Latin. Uh, go study up on Latin. That's my, <laughs> that's my quota for you for the day. Uh, all right, so... We got some explaining to do to Nelly over something we promised her. Pretty sure it's gonna be something about being her prince. We're about to find out. Ahem. <laughs> Nell, you promised me. Or have you forgotten? I haven't forgotten. I'm just asking if we can go another day. Another day? This isn't something that happens every day. I've been looking forward to tonight's performance for so long. There's nothing I can do about that. We're having a gathering at the priest's home tonight. Several high-ranking officials have come up from the mainland just for this. Who cares? I... I care. You know, Nelly, it doesn't have to be me who goes with you. No, I want to go with you, Mel. You've been so distant lately, dearest Mel. You refuse to do anything with me. That's not true. Tell me, if you can't go today, when can you? When will you be willing to go out with me? Oh, don't say it like that. That just... <laughs> that sounds kind of weird when you put it that way. When will you be willing to play cards with me? To have tea together? Live happily ever after in a castle. I can't make any promises. I have things to do, obligations. And Nelly, you're almost an adult yourself. Stop acting like such a child. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I'm not an adult yet. I'm still a kid, a teenager. Teenagers are kids. <laughs> If it means I don't get to play with you anymore, dearest Mel, then I don't want to be an adult. Tricks aren't for adults, they're for kids. Nelly, you can't. Lady Nelly. Oh, <laughs> Lady Nelly, the master wishes to speak with you. Huh? Father does? What could he want? G go on, Nelly. You can't make father wait. He's very particular about people keeping their appointments. Yes, he is. Unlike you, dearest Mel. <laughs> Skitter. <laughs> What's got her in such a foul mood? Is the fact that I'm not <laughs> going to the thing I promised her? What could it possibly be? Such a head scratcher. Oh, thank goodness for small miracles. Nelly just won't seem to take me at my word today. Or lately. You mustn't be so harsh on her. She is your one and only darling little sister. You're right, but still, she's taken it a bit far to- too far to- of late. Ba ba ba. Oh, I'm not so sure. You are- you kind of being a prick. <laughs> not promising her things you promised her a while back. She does not seem to be behaving any differently to me. Hmm. Am I the one acting differently then? Well, enough about that. Can I ask you a favor? Well, me? What can I do for you? I was thinking... Physically, Mel was undeniably a young man, but the smirk that crossed his lips as he schemed gave his face the sweet look of a little boy. Or perhaps that was simply part of his charm, and it was not the age disparity but his character that made his smile so heartwarming. What did he ask of me? <laughs> you shall find out soon enough. It was spying. <laughs> Spy on the white-haired girl. <laughs> it's cloudy. And thank goodness for that, too. Though it would be even better if it were even darker out. Um, I believe the textile shop was around here. Ah. Hi there! 
just always costly at 100% volume, no subtlety. Lord Mel, um, fancy meeting you here? Yeah, what a surprise! So, uh, what do you say we take this chance and go for a little walk? Since you are sensitive to the sunlight, we can keep our eyes out for shadowy areas as we go. And if you feel unwell, just let me know. Um, I was sent out to run an errand. I was hoping to stay in these shady back alleys. Don't worry about that. I will literally start melting the moment my skin touches the sunlight. Come on, follow me! Wee hee hee, yahoo! <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, it, uh, actually wasn't an accident that we crossed paths. Oh, so you were stalking me. F understood. I planned this out ahead of time. Asked to have you sent out on a fake errand. Ah, truly knows the way to another person's heart. <laughs> it, it feels like I'm always on alert back at the mansion. Haha, <laughs> can't relax in my own house. It's actually kind of funny. Yeah, real funny. <laughs> Seems like she can't. She's always gonna have to be on alert now. Sorry. That was inappropriate of me. I, I just thought since the sun's mostly blocked out, it'd be alright if... Um, I'm feeling fine. Just fine. Ah! Lovely, lovely weather. Of course. I get her out of the house and I can't even think of anything to say. Uh, hey, uh... Yes? Have you settled into life at the mansion? I have. Everyone has been such a big help. That's good to hear. In indeed. So, um... Yes? Nellie told me to, uh, she had you help redecorate her room some time back. Ah, uh, yes, that was shortly after I arrived. About two years ago now? What of it? Ah, uh, I'm really bad at this conversation thing. Yeah, uh, that day, Nellie told me. That you don't... Um... I don't... Never mind, sorry, it's not important. <laughs> oh man, this dude is a master of conversation. Holy. It is important, but I just. I can't just ask how she feels about me. So I'm just gonna leave it at a very vague. I. You don't. <laughs> that would make it sound like I. care. <laughs> Forget sound like I do, don't I? Lord Mel. Oh, sorry, you had something on my mind. Ah, uh, it looks like it might rain again today. The weather usually gets better as summer approaches, not worse like it's been. It won't be a heavy storm, though. No? The wind is too gentle. Ah, uh, you know, vampires can normally tell the ferocity of a storm through the wind. You wouldn't happen to be a vampire, would you? <laughs> you can tell from that? Vaguely, but yes. Huh, that's impressive. I often leave the house unprepared, only to find myself sloshing back in the rain. Hee <laughs> hee. You wouldn't happen to have an umbrella, would you? That was also part of my plan. You laugh a lot more than you used to. D do I? Yeah, and I like that. You look better with a smile on your face. Oops, <laughs> don't mind the dialogue box just... Just glitching out because I press right click. A smile suits Lady Nelly much more than I. What? Her smile and your smile are completely different. Believe me, I've stared long enough. Also, a smile suits you as well, Lord Mel. D d uh, d do you think so? What am I supposed to do? In the face of a smile like that, do I smile back? So, um... Yes. 
Ah, uh, knowing her, if I ask if I'm imposing, she'll say no without hesitation. Trying to cover myself isn't going to get me anywhere. Gosh, I really gotta stop starting a thought and then immediately backtracking in my mind. Hold on a second. There we go. Gave you some space. I never did get you those flowers like I promised. There was a single white rose blooming in the garden. I was planning to give it to you, but it disappeared before I had the chance. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, uh... So, I'd like you to have this. It's a red rose. It's not a real rose, but it won't wilt either. Ah, fake roses. I... Mel was holding an ornamental white rose. It was an impressively detailed replica of the real thing, crafted by an incredibly skilled artisan's hand. It was, I imagine, made by the same craftsman from whom Mel had ordered Nellie's birthday necklace. The young man, who but, a be who but a handful of days earlier had said he had no sweetheart, had come in to commission a present for a girl. The master of the shop must have been quite impressed. Or perhaps it had given him a good laugh instead. It was for this moment that he so desperately sought for time together with the white-haired girl. I don't know what you like, so I had to base it on my sister's tastes. <sighs> my apologies. I cannot accept this. This is not proper drip. Is, this, is the design not to your liking? No, I just... If you're concerned about how much I paid for it, don't be. I'm rich. Money literally has no consequence. I just want you to have it, that's all. Please. Why are you so kind to me? Why? Because... I'm sorry, I can't accept it. A clear glint of flustered panic was visible in her red eyes. There is not a girl in the world whose heart would not flutter at the sight of the sparkling rose accessory. All four billion. But her reaction was far from delight. As a matter of fact, there were traces of fear and apprehension in her countenance. I beg your pardon. Oh, hold on! Oh my god! <laughs> That's like the most emotion I've seen from him. With a look of distress on her face, the white-haired girl made to run off, but Mel grabbed her by the arm in the nick of time. Oh, jeez. At least tell me why. Is it because you dislike me? I never said... I'm... Something's wrong with me. From the day you arrived at the mansion, it's like I haven't been myself. I've been strangely a flutter ever since then. Whether I try to study or whether I try to read, none of it sticks. I'm just looking at pages of text, tracing rows of letters, only for them to disappear as soon as I look away. It's all... It's all because of you. I... I truly, truly am sorry. Please, don't be any more generous than you already have. When I'm with you, my willpower wavers. W what do you mean by that? I'm so sorry. Oh my god. Wait! Ah! Mel's grip loosened for a moment, allowing her to slip free and dart off like a gust of wind, not giving him a chance to stop her a second time. The dumbfounded, flaxen-haired boy stood frozen in place, left all by himself. The breeze, which the white-haired girl had called gentle earlier, felt faintly chilly, almost as if mocking him. Was it something I said? <laughs> it looks like she's even less fond of me than I thought. Uh, God, I'm crying. This is my crying face. I'm pathetic. Ah, don't look at my ugly crying face. Well, if it isn't Mel. What might you be? Are you crying? Ha 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 ha. 
I'm so pitiful. Sorry you had to see this. Think nothing of it. I passed by a girl just a few moments ago. She appeared to be rather distressed as well. Did something happen between the two of you? I wasn't good enough, it seems. Not good enough? That was the new maid I was telling you about before. I was, um... Like you said, father. I was keen on her. Quite. Keen a little too hard. Enough to bring me to tears like a miserable child. But she rejected me. I don't even... Have what it takes to be a stand-in prince. Mel. I apologize for complaining to you about this. I'm completely hopeless. Mel. Please, don't try to cheer me up. I don't need any sympathy. I just... No, Mel. Listen to me. Next time on Hooky Hour, as I, the Invisible Priest, will give you guiding words so you may win the woman of your dreams or something. Anyways, I will see you all next time on Hooky Hour. Until then, bye.